maybe you missed it, but routers have leveled up in the last year or two. But where do you even start if home networking isn't your strong suit? Well, you can relax, because I'm here to help. In this video, we are gonna take a look at some of your top tested router options, including mesh and Wi-Fi 6, gaming, you name it. No matter what your budget is, we're gonna help you find the router that is right for your home. Let's start with Wi-Fi 6, which is the newest generation of Wi-Fi. Among other key advancements, including support for the latest in Wi-Fi security, devices that support Wi-Fi 6 can send bigger chunks of data with each individual transmission, and that makes them up to 30% faster than before. If you've bought a new phone, tablet, or laptop in the last couple of years, then there's a pretty good chance that it supports Wi-Fi 6, but you're going to need a Wi-Fi 6 router at home in order to take advantage of those faster speeds under your own roof. The good news is that upgrading to a Wi-Fi 6 router doesn't need to be expensive. If you live in a small to medium-sized home with an internet speed of 500 megabits per second or less, then you'd probably be perfectly fine with an entry-level model like one of these three that just magically appeared in front of me. Now, how can you tell that these are entry-level Wi-Fi 6 routers? The key is to look for the speed rating on the box, like this one. The AX part tells you that it supports Wi-Fi 6 because the official name of Wi-Fi 6 is 802.11ax. The number next to the AX tells you the combined top speeds of each of the router's bands. A number like 1500 or 1800 is about as low as you'll see from a Wi-Fi 6 router. Now all three of these here are AX1800 routers, and I tested them side by side, they all tested pretty well. But the one that tested the best was this one, the TP-Link Archer AX21. It's often on sale for less than 100 bucks, and it's a great Wi-Fi 6 bargain pick. Perfect for an apartment or a small home, especially if you don't want to spend very much. But let's say your home is a little bigger. Maybe something like a two-story, multi-bedroom townhouse with a few thousand square feet of space to cover. For a big range boost and a strong signal in every room, your best bet is a mesh router that uses multiple devices to relay traffic from all corners of your home back to the modem. That was a pretty expensive proposition just a couple of years ago, but with interest in mesh routers soaring, manufacturers started to make a bunch of them, and prices started to come down quite a bit. Take this system, for instance, the AC1200 version of Netgear Orbi. It's the cheapest, most basic Orbi router out there, available in a three-pack at Walmart for just a little over 100 bucks right now. It doesn't support Wi-Fi 6, and it isn't built for blazing fast gigabit fiber connections, but if you're living with something slower, like a cable or DSL connection, and you just want a router capable of bringing your whole house online, this system will absolutely get the job done. And don't worry too much about setup. Routers have gotten a lot more user-friendly in recent years thanks to the fact that just about every one of them comes with a companion app that can walk you through the setup process. In most cases, you'll be able to get a new router up and running in a matter of minutes. Just plug it in and follow the instructions in the app. Along with TP-Link and Netgear, your top router manufacturers include Asus and Linksys and D-Link, Eero, Google Nest. All of them have been cranking out lots and lots of routers in recent years, so even with a supply chain shortage, you've got a lot of options. Let's take a look at a few more that performed well in our tests. If you're looking for something that's a little more powerful than that Wi-Fi 5 Netgear Orbi system, and if you're willing to spend a bit more than $200, you'll start to see mesh routers that include support for Wi-Fi 6. This is where I'd be looking if I were buying a router right now, but with so many options available at so many different price points, it can be tough to tell whether or not you're spending more than you should. Take this mesh system, another one from the Netgear Orbi line. It's an AX6000 mesh router, so it offers fast speeds and full support for Wi-Fi 6, and it also features a tri-band design, which means that it has three separate bands of traffic, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and a second 5 gigahertz band that the system uses as a dedicated wireless backhaul connection between the router and its satellites. That tri-band approach is a really nice upgrade in a mesh system like this. In fact, from a performance standpoint, this Necker Orbi system is the best mesh router we've ever tested. The only problem with it is that it's really expensive at $700 for a two-pack. Fortunately, we are starting to see prices come down on tri-band mesh routers with support for Wi-Fi 6, like that one. Last year, I was quite impressed by the performance I saw from the Asus Zen Wi-Fi X-T8, which costs $450 for a two-pack, as well as the Eero Pro 6 from Amazon, which costs $400 for a two-pack. Neither of them are quite as impressive as that Orbi system, but they're awfully close and they cost hundreds less. 
Even better, this TP-Link Deco W7200 mesh router, which just hit the market this fall. At just $230 for a two-pack, it offers full support for Wi-Fi 6, as well as that fancy tri-band design with the dedicated backhaul, and it performs just as well as the Asus and Eero routers I mentioned, if not slightly better in some respects. Right now, this is probably the easiest mesh router for me to recommend, and one of the first ones I'd point people towards. It checks all of the boxes you'd want in an upgrade pick, and the price is pretty much unbeatable. And then there are the upgrade picks that are tougher for me to recommend. If you're a gamer, you might be tempted to spend up on a fancy looking gaming router like this one from Asus. And routers like these are typically very powerful and they have nice designs and they have lots of extra features that promise to help you optimize your connection and reduce latency whenever you're gaming online. The problem that I have with them is that they're typically pretty overpriced and in a lot of cases, the gaming gains you're gonna get with your latency and with your connection are pretty minimal at best. Still, there are some very good picks in the gaming router category if you know where to look. My favorite is this one, the Asus RT-AX86U. Available for about 250 or less, it isn't unreasonably priced, and it offers great performance that makes full use of Wi-Fi 6. Even if you aren't a gamer, this router is a really nice pick, and a good step up from those entry-level Wi-Fi 6 routers I started the video with. I would also urge some caution with regards to Wi-Fi 6E, which is another recent Wi-Fi advancement that's gonna try and tempt you into spending big if you're shopping right now. Wi-Fi 6E isn't a new generation of Wi-Fi like Wi-Fi 6 is. Instead, Wi-Fi 6E is a special designation for Wi-Fi 6 routers that are equipped to send signals in the newly opened 6 gigahertz band. And that's something that routers couldn't do before an FCC vote last year to open that band up. The 6 gigahertz band is more than twice as wide as the 5 gigahertz band, so there's room for lots and lots of bandwidth from lots and lots of devices, and there aren't any earlier gen devices on that band to cause interference, and that makes it sort of like an exclusive members only club for Wi Fi 6 devices only. The problem with the 6 gigahertz band is that it doesn't offer range that's as strong as the 5 gigahertz band, particularly with respect to uploads. On top of that, most home internet connections aren't nearly fast enough to take full advantage of it. In my early tests with Wi-Fi 6E routers from names like Asus and Netgear and Linksys, the 6 GHz band basically performed identically to the 5 GHz band, but with less range. Now that's not to say that Wi-Fi 6E is useless. If you're at a stadium or an airport or anywhere else where you might need to use a crowded public Wi-Fi network, then a 6E connection might be absolutely fantastic. But that just makes me want a Wi-Fi 6E phone or laptop on the go, not a Wi-Fi 6E router at home. And yeah, Wi-Fi 6E routers like these and others are really, really expensive. For instance, the newest Netgear Orbi mesh system supports Wi-Fi 6E, but it costs well over $1,000 for a two-pack. That is just way too expensive for me to recommend, especially at a time when there aren't a whole lot of Wi-Fi 6E devices out there that can even take advantage of that six gigahertz band. All of that said, if you're a true early adopter who wants to future-proof your home and you really want to buy in right now with Wi-Fi 6E, we are starting to see some deals that might be worth considering. For instance, the Linksys Hydra Pro here is a Wi-Fi 6E router that usually costs $500, but with the holidays coming up, it's already marked down to $350. Right now, that's the only Wi-Fi 6E router that I can really come close to recommending, but if you want a router like that, I think the better plan is probably to wait until next year. For more information on all of the routers I talked about today, plus a whole lot of others, including all of my nerdy performance charts that show you how they stack up, head over to CNET.com and check that content out. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. You can also check out the routers I talked about at the links below if you're looking to buy one today. Thanks a lot for watching and leave us a comment. Let us know which one you're interested in and which ones you want us to check out in the future.